Okay then gang, so far we've only been adding one widget at a time to the body of our app, whether that be a text widget or an image or a button or a container or something else, and that is a pretty boring. So what I'd like to do is now expand our layout so that we can have multiple different widgets on the page at once. Ta-da! And to do that, we're going to be using a combination of row and column widgets. Now, if you've ever used CSS grids or Flexbox before, this kind of layout might be second nature to you and you're going to pick it up pretty quickly. It's one of the ways in which Flutter has kind of borrowed from the web. But if not, don't worry, it's not too hard to grasp after a little bit of practice. So anyway, a row in itself is a widget. And that widget can then contain several different widgets inside it, which makes sense because we can have multiple widgets in a row on a screen, can't we? So let's try adding this row. I'm going to get rid of that padding. I don't want that anymore. And instead, I want to replace this with a row widget. Now, since we can have more than one child inside a row, we don't have a child property anymore. Instead, we have a children property. So we can see the suggestion right there. So I'm going to press tab to accept that suggestion. And we can see that this is now a list. And the type of things in that list should be widgets. So we're saying now the children property should be a list of widgets. And those widgets inside that list are the things that will be inside this row. That makes sense. So if we open this up, now I can add different widgets inside this row. What I'm going to do is a text widget, first of all, that just says like, hello world, standard. And then after that, I'm going to do a flat button. And inside the button, we'll do an unpressed property so that Flutter doesn't shout at me. And we don't have to put anything inside this function for now. We'll also do a color. And this is going to be colors dot amber, we'll say, a nice yellow color. And then also we'll do a child property so that we can have a text widget inside that button. Remember, this is how we add text inside a button. It needs a child property and then a text widget. So the text will just say, you know, click me. Okay, so we've got two widgets now inside this row. Let's just do a third for good measure. And by the way, notice I'm comma separating these widgets inside this list. When we looked at lists at the start of the whole series, that's what I said. You can comma separate different values inside a list. It's just like an array in JavaScript. Anyway, I digress. The third element or the third widget is going to be a container. So inside this container, we'll do a color property, first of all, to colorize this. So we'll say colors and then dots cyan. Let's go for something different. And then we'll also do a padding property just to give this a bit of breathing space inside. And this padding property is going to be the edge inset and we'll choose all. So all the way around, it's going to have the same value, which will be 30 pixels. Now we want something to show inside this container. So I'll do a child property, which is also going to be text. And then I'll just say inside container in case you didn't already know. <laughs> okay, so now we have these three widgets bunched up together inside this single row and they're all inside this widget list right here. So if I save this now, then we're going to see all of these widgets in a single row like this. Awesome. Now we have more than one widget on the page at a time. So that is progress. And they're all inside one row. So that's good. That's a good first step. But notice this. They're all bunched up on the left side, pressed against each other. Now that's fine. Maybe that's how you want them to look. But you might want to spread these out differently inside the row. So to do that, what we could do is use a property on the row and make sure it's on the row itself, not inside the children or any other widget inside that. On the row itself, we can use a property called main axis alignment. So if I use that, I can control how these widgets are aligned on the main axis. Now to explain all this axis thing, I've prepared a cool little picture, which I'm going to show you. So imagine we have our row going across like this with three different widgets. Our main axis is the direction of the row and the cross axis is the perpendicular direction. So we have a main axis going across and a cross axis going downwards. So we can control the layout on the main axis and also the cross axis. So we're going to do the main one first of all, and this is the property we use to control the layout. Now, we have different options here. 
and all those options are on the main axis alignment object. So we can see we can use the center property, space evenly, space around, end, space between, and start. Now start is the default one where they're all bunched up to the start next to each other, but we could use, for example, the center property. Now if I say this, they're all gonna be in the center of the row. So that's nice if you want to centrally align them in the middle. Uh, we could also use a different property. So I'll say dot space between. And if I save this, you can see now we have space between them, but no space on the end of the row, on the left or the right, but that's good. Um, let's try something else. I can use start, that was the default one. Uh, space evenly is still gonna space these out a little bit, but now we get a bit of space on the left and the right as well. And you can see the space between each element or each widget and the sides is the same. It's evenly spaced. Let's do another one. So dot end. You can probably guess what this is going to do. It's going to bunch them up to the right to the end of the row like this. So the opposite of start. And finally, let's look at the other one. We've got space around. If I save this, then we can see we have space around the elements as well. And it's a bit like space evenly. But notice this time the space here between the widgets is double the space between the widgets and the sides. So they're the different things we can use or the different properties we can use on the main axis alignment to align these different widgets. So what I'm going to do is stick with space evenly for now and save that. So it looks something like this. And we can also control how they're displayed on the cross axis as well, this direction. So at the minute, they're all kind of in the center. This is in the center of the row vertically, if you like. It's not at the top, it's not at the bottom, it's in the center, but we can control this differently. And the way we do that is by using the cross axis alignment property. Again, we use the cross axis alignment object right here. We have different properties. We have stretch. So if I did that and saved, then notice they stretch the whole height of the available space. We don't want that, so let me take that off and choose something different. I'm gonna choose center, see what that does. Okay, well that was the default value because that's how it looked before. Let's choose something else. We'll go with start, and if I save this, notice now that at the start of the cross axis, so at the top if you like, and if we do end, then you'll probably guess it, they're gonna be at the end. Now it's not gonna be down here, and I'll show you that. It's gonna be at the bottom of the highest widget. So this is the highest widget, and this is now going to the bottom of the row, which now takes up that height, okay? And I think what I'll do is I'll just put this to be start for now, and save that so they all go to the start. So there we go, my friends. That is rows, and how we can add multiple different widgets inside the row so we can see all of those on the screen. The next part of the layout puzzle is gonna be columns, and we're gonna look at that in the next video.